Hey, what's up guys? How is your day today? Raiden Shogun just have a rerun. She is a very amazing DPS and support unit for the team. Almost can fit into any team and can be considered as free to play unit in terms of weapon and constellation. So in this video, I will cover everything about Raiden Shogun from her talents, constellation, artifacts, weapons, and team composition. Regarding the constellation, I will also give a comparison between C0 and C2. Is it worth it? How much does it improve your DPS value, which is generally most of people ask about. So without any further ado, let's jump ahead to talent section. For Raiden normal attack, this is where actually you can leave it unupgraded at all. Because as a DPS, you will rely on Raiden burst. And the burst has its own burst normal attack scaling, so it's not scaling on this normal attack. You can even leave it at level 1. I have upgraded it just for the sake of testing, so don't mind it. So if you're really short on resource, you can leave this talent. Now let's move on to the elemental skill. The elemental skill of Raiden Shogun Bellful Omen is the one that makes her support capabilities great. So it's pretty straightforward skill. Upon press E, you will grant Eye of Stormy buff, which will help Raiden or your other party member deal coordinated AOE electro damage upon attacking the enemies. This is not limited to normal attack, but basically, dealing damage using skill or burst will also trigger the coordinated attack every 0.9 seconds. While the scaling for coordinated attack itself is not that high, in my opinion, but there's one more mechanic that makes this E skill great. So, every character that gain this buff will have their elemental damage burst increase based on their burst energy cost, and the scaling is really high. So at level 9, you can get a 0.30% burst damage bonus per energy point. So for example, unit with high energy cost with 80 energy cost will have 24% increased burst damage. With this mechanic, Raiden basically boosts value of the unit that have a high energy cost burst, like Xiangling, while also provide an off-field electro damage. This E skill is important, and you should upgrade it as much as you can, but I won't consider it worth to be crowned unless you really want to dedicate your resource for Raiden Shogun. Last, the most important talent for Raiden is her elemental burst. While it only has 7 second active duration, but the damage that can be produced by Raiden during her burst is absolutely insane. So, by activating the burst, initially it will consume a resource stat that you gain from other unit bursts as a bonus damage and deal a huge burst damage that really have a high scaling. And after that, your normal attack will be infused with electro which cannot be overridden. It's of the normal attack considered as elemental burst damage during this duration. As you can see here, it has own specific scaling. While this is the main source of your Raiden damage, it also recharging your entire party energy on every slash that you deal to the enemies every 1 second, that up to 5 times during 7 second duration. This is the mechanic that makes Raiden Shogun one of the most valuable unit in the game, because she can be a great DPS while also support the energy for all of your party member at the same time, makes her great to support any team composition, if you plan to use her as sub DPS and support. There is one more thing that I really want to highlight, and maybe people often forget is Raiden passive talent. So first, she will have an additional electro damage for every 1% energy recharge above 100% ER that she have. Which means, with max ascension and ER above 200, it's possible to have an electro damage bonus value over 100 which is really huge. And secondly, it also increases energy restoration from burst by 0.6% per 1 ER. For example, I have Raiden with 240% ER that will result in 84% restoration bonus from base 2.5 burst energy restoration at max level 10. Okay, now let's move on to the interesting part, the constellation. For Raiden constellation, to be honest, you will doing fine with zero constellation. Even without any constellation, you can easily sweep every enemies with easy. I always assume constellation 1 to constellation 3 is nice to have, but not really needed at all. And every constellation beyond constellation 3 is really overkill and unnecessary, because from constellation 4 to constellation 6, it's more to support your team, with Raiden already doing great at zero constellation. But it's also fair to say, there are so many people enjoy when their character can do a lot of huge damage. To bring Raiden to maximum DPS potential is actually lies in Constellation 2 and Constellation 3. The Constellation 3 is pretty straightforward, because 
it upgrades your burst to max level, which automatically increases your damage output. But even at Constellation 2, you can already enjoy a huge lapse from zero Constellation damage output, because at Constellation 2, Raiden Burst Attack will ignore 60% of enemy's defense. So here is a quick comparison between Constellation 0 and Constellation 2, with full team buff from our Benny Boy, Kaju Boy, and her royal servant Gojo Sar. With Constellation 0, Raiden can deal around 250k with full buff from entire party to these big puppies. Now let's see how much Constellation 2 Raiden can outperform. So surprisingly, it could deal around 460k to big puppies. So to sum it up, you could double your damage compared with damage from Constellation 0 if you invest Raiden to Constellation 2. For any of you that really love to see huge damage, it certainly worth it. But once again I want to say, this comparison just to show how much difference it can do, while I can assure you that Constellation 0 is already enough. Let's talk about the artifacts. Artifacts for Raiden Shogun is limited because how Raiden Shogun mechanic works. With her entire kit rely on energy recharge and burst damage, the best artifact set for her is 4-piece emblem. It gives you additional energy recharge by 20% and 25% from total energy recharge that you have will convert as burst damage bonus. This set is unreplaceable by other set, but if you by any chance have a bad roll on emblem set, you can consider 2-piece noblesse and 2-piece emblem as an alternative. While it can give you that much burst damage no matter how good you stack energy recharge, at least it's guaranteed you will get 20% bonus elemental burst every time you activated it. Seeking for main stat and substat can be very difficult for Raiden, because while you obviously want to have a lot of energy recharge, you also need to look for a good crit ratio. For sand piece, you have an option for either attack sand or energy recharge sand. If by any condition your total energy recharge is below 200, which arguably I can say quite low for Raiden, then you should go for ER sense, especially if you run with 4-piece emblem. But if somehow you run 2-piece emblem 2-piece noblesse, then feel free to use attack sense if you already have energy around 170 or 180. 170 to 180 energy is still considered good in my opinion. The reason is because with 2-piece noblesse, you actually will get 20% burst damage bonus no matter how much your ER. But you don't want to have too low ER as it will impact your electro damage bonus and energy restoration scaling from your passive talent. For goblet sense, you have an option to go for either electro damage or attack goblet. Honestly, between these two options, I would still recommend using electro goblet. It's more versatile and viable for every team composition as it helps boost your electro damage bonus which result in bonus damage as you do on elemental reaction. But if for some reason you have a very low attack, maybe because you have a low base attack weapon then feel free to use attack goblet. For circuit, it's as simple as usual. Crit circuit is the must to push your damage potential and for substat on every pieces you should prioritize on crit and energy recharge first then attack as last choice. Now let's move on to weapon section. For Raiden, weapon choice is really important because with good weapon you can have a good energy recharge or crit status. So it will help a lot if you don't have a good stats on artifacts. The best weapon for Raiden is obviously the engulfing lightning as it provides a high base attack, high energy recharge while also increase attack by 28% over 100% base ER that you have. It also make you possible to gain 30% energy recharge after using the burst. Although it's a very good weapon, but it's a limited 5 star weapon, and not everyone can have it. The second best pull arm for Raiden is Staff of Homa because it increase your crit damage, have a high base attack, and have a good passive to increase your attack. Other than these two 5 star weapon, the other 5 star weapon won't have a very good impact or I can say will perform much lower compared with Raiden best 4 star weapon because for example like Calamity, Jet Wing Spear and Skyward Spine, although they have good base attack and stats but generally they can be outmatched by 4 star weapon like the Wave Breaker and the Cats, especially the Cats because you can have a free maximum refinement on it. Between Wave Breaker Finn and the Cats, if both of them are on re refinement 5, I absolutely recommend the Wave Breaker Fin, as it gives you a lot of attack, it can boost your elemental burst damage by over 50% and 
especially because you normally would run Raiden on high energy costume. I have talked about wave breaker fin on another video, so if you unfamiliar with this football arm, you should check it out. The second best 4 star choice is the cats, because the cats give you good amount of energy recharge, it also increase your elemental burst damage and crit rate. Although this is ranked 4 on my list, but I still see this as a good pull arm. It perform good and the most viable option because everyone can have it for free in the game. With all of this information, we can already see Raiden Shogun really fit well into any team. She can be hyper carry, sub DPS, off field DPS, burst support, support, and so on. Basically, she can fill every hole that you have in your team. While she is great and very versatile, but Raiden have her best team composition that work best for her. The first one is of course the team that rely on Raiden alone to do most of the damage, where every support unit is meant to buff Raiden damage output, which consists of Gujo Sara, Kajuha, and Bennett. With this composition, every party member burst or buff is focused on bring out the best from Raiden burst. All three of this unit is very important, and I can say unreplaceable. You can take out Kujo Sara with other electro unit like Yaimiko or Fissel, but they serve different purpose as Yaimiko and Fissel is more as off-field DPS. For Kajuha, you can replace with Fenty or Sucrose to deal a lot of swirl damage. For Bennett, I don't think you can find any replacement for this composition, since he gives you everything that you need. Huge attack buff and heal which can be achieved by other unit. If you don't have him, feel free to swap with any unit you like. The second best team for Raiden is Raiden National Team, which consists of Xiangling, Xingqiu, and Bennett. This team once again is unreplaceable. If you don't have one of the unit, it won't be considered as great as it is. So beside these two teams, actually Raiden can fit into any team that you want. You can use her as a replacement for any role that you need, except as a healer. Okay, so we already in the last section of this video. I will do a showcase of Raiden, but instead of doing it with usual hyper carry or national team, I want to showcase it with Kokomi, which present on current banner also. Kokomi will replace Bennett for this team. She won't give benefit for Raiden with attack buff, but at least it helped him utilize the moon buff while also serve her true purpose as a healer. So that's it. I hope you enjoy the build and showcase later. Thanks for watching. Please subscribe if you like my content and see you on another video. Have a good day everyone. Shine's eternal!